All right, I have a question I cannot seem to ever find the answer for, and I'm wondering, maybe you can help me, or maybe today's episode can help us uncover it. But the truth is, I don't know about you, but it always seems to be more fun to try something new than to take advantage of things you already have. I think it's maybe ingrained into our culture today as we're encouraged to always want what other people have before being happy with what we've actually been given. But the truth is, when it comes to marketing your book, You already have in your hand oodles of potential that you likely haven't taken full advantage of yet. So before you invest in major marketing efforts or even try the next new shiny object out there, and believe me, it's even hard for me to steer clear from that myself, I want you to consider evaluating what is within your grasp and leverage what you already have. Hey, I'm Stephanie Fegger and Empower is my middle name. Well, not really, but it should be. I believe that empowered people empower people, and I'm obsessed with empowering you, the nonfiction author, with impactful marketing strategies to help you take your important message and share it with those who desperately need it, want it, and will buy it. As the owner and chief strategist of the Empower PR group and an author of several books myself, I have merged my love for reading books and writing books and marketing books to help nonfiction authors with laser-focused strategies and tactics to write books itself, promote books to those who need and want them most, and build meaningful businesses from empowering messages. I want you to think of this as your one-stop shop for marketing insights from an author who has been there, done that, and understands exactly where you are. So get your pins ready because I am ready to empower you, my friend. This is the Empowered Author Podcast. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Marketing can be daunting. Even the word in and of itself is a daunting word that so many people can't even articulate a definition for, marketers included. (laughs) And I think in our already cluttered and chaotic world, we find ways to put even more out there and make things harder for ourselves and for others. So I had a friend who visited once my home office, which is probably my most favorite place in our home. It was a last minute addition when we were building to put a little room above the garage, beautifully nestled up there and quiet. And I absolutely love it, but it has those slanted walls that happen typically in rooms that are above garages. And my friend walked in and she saw the ceiling slant and I saw her eyes glisten. And I remember wondering what was going on in her mind. It didn't take me long to figure it out because she shared very quickly that she saw so much potential in this room for putting things on all of these walls, even the slanted ceilings. She said, if I see a space, and by the way, our walls have plenty of that, she said, I've got to fill it. Now, the moment that she shared that, I felt something within me feel very differently. This feeling of, oh my gosh, are you kidding? You cannot put anything on those slanted walls because I need simplicity. It is something I prefer. Simple, open lines, lack of clutter helps me think better, be more creative and be less distracted. I like simple. And whether you are like me or like my friend who wanted to put everything on any open space you could find, I think the world actually veers more towards the latter. If there is an open space or not, the world is going to want to fully saturate it. They will see an opportunity, even if the opportunity is itty bitty and people will try to wiggle in and take advantage of that opportunity. What that does is make us feel a bit cluttered and overwhelmed. The reality is, is if that person who's trying to wiggle into that open space is someone who is wanting to market something to you, guess what? You're going to try to be convinced that their offering is something you desperately need too. So if you haven't already noticed, I'm a bit of a different type of marketer than the others that are out there in the sense that I'd actually rather you cut out the clutter in your own life, take those things off of the slanted ceiling walls and figure out how to promote your book in a way that takes advantage of what you already have in a more simple way. That is a bit against the marketing grain, but it is something I think is extremely effective. I want you to focus on what you already have, what your readers need, and what works. So in today's episode, we're going to wrap up the season on unique book marketing ideas by going back to simplicity. And let's end with the not so unique ideas, but rather the ones that are right under your nose that you can take advantage of right now.
Let's start with what you have, and I bet you have a lot more than you know you have. Before you go investing in something new, okay, pause and take an inventory of what opportunities are right in front of you. Like pull out a pen and paper and jot these down with me <laughs> and see if any of these are things you have access to. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that if you've written a book or you plan to, or if you have a business or you plan to build one, you likely have the following. You likely have an email, a phone and a phone number, a website, a social media presence, maybe a computer a mailing address, a means of transportation, possibly a bag that you carry or something that you carry your stuff in regularly, and you probably have a voice to communicate with. Okay, so none of those are earth shattering, but each of them are walking gems for marketing. And for whatever reason, many of these always get overlooked. But not anymore, by golly, not today. Today is the day you are going to fully use what you've got. And I've got some ideas on how to do that. So let's start with email. You have one, right? If you don't, go snatch a Gmail one. It's free and you can get one that aligns with your book or your author brand. Of course, my favorite emails are the ones that are connected with your website domain. But that's a story for another day. Today, I just care that you have an email because email is the main mode of communication and how people connect with one another nowadays. It is tried and true and it works. And if you haven't leveraged your email signature or automatic replies to support you in passively selling your book, you've missed out, friend. So for your email signature, set one up today and do one that includes several things in it. One, make sure if you have a book, you've got a visual of your book stack. It's called a 3D rendering or a digital book stack. Make sure that graphic is in your email signature and hyperlinks to an Amazon affiliate link and or your website for people to purchase. Easy as that. You don't have to tell people you're the author of the book. They see it every time you email them. You may have other things going on in your life. Maybe you have a new book on the horizon. Maybe you're looking to build upon a launch team. Maybe you have a new offering in your business that aligns with your book. Leverage your email signature to do so. Every time we have a new season in the podcast come out, I make sure to articulate that in my email signature. So simple is all you need, but make sure you take full advantage of that email signature. Another really awesome thing about email that I'll be honest, I just recently started using in my favor is automatic replies. So I get the pleasure of having deep dive days with clients. I call them our VIP days. They're some of my favorites. And during these VIP days, I turn off email. I step away and I become fully immersed in any and everything I can do to support an author in their marketing efforts. So Because I want to make sure people know I'm not going to be by email, I set up an automatic reply or an out of office. Now, some people would say, great, just set it up and move on. But I decided to use it as a way, as a promotional tool for the authors I support. You can use it as a promotional tool in your own life. There is a girl that I want to grow up and be when I get older, (laughs) and she is actually a peer of mine who I truly respect. And she has an automatic reply that is always set up that lets people know how frequently she checks her emails throughout the day, and how she looks forward to circling back shortly. So it is always up and it really gauges and builds expectations. But you could leverage that by talking about your book in the process. Brilliant, right? Like it's literally free and right at your fingertips. So most people nowadays have a smartphone. And guess what? You can use it as a marketing tool as well. Physically, you can brand your phone case. Ever thought about that? You can brand the case. You can brand the screen. You can do all of that that aligns with your book. Again, it becomes a conversation starter when you run into people. And let's be honest, nine times out of 10, most of us are on our phones regularly out in public. Another thing you can do is actually update your contact in your phone. So when people call you or when you share your contact with other people, you can leverage your contact as a means for communication, sharing and information about your book. Great way to do that is to make sure that you change the photo of you to be maybe that of your book stack. Hmm, Creative idea, right? So your phone can actually also be a marketing tool. You could also use your voicemail as an opportunity to let people know, hey, I'm not here right now. Maybe I'm working on my book. Maybe you should go buy it. (laughs) Take advantage of that. And even though not everybody listens to and leaves voicemails, people will hear that. If you have a website, well, are you using it to talk about you, your book, and your offerings best? I say this, and you might be thinking, 
yes, Stephanie, duh, isn't that what my website's about? And yet every time I do a digital presence audit, which happens to all of our authors, I would say 95% of the time I am finding more opportunities on how to better articulate your message, your book, and your offerings through your website. So take a review of that. But today I'm not talking about deep dives on websites. If you need that, go to season four. We have an entire six episodes focused on other websites you'll find interesting. But right now I want to ask you, how are you sharing your website? Are you? Is that a part of your email signature? It should be. Is it on your social media infrastructure? What is that? Well, it should be there too. Anywhere that you have information out there, make sure your website is in alignment because that is a beautiful tool for people to get a glimpse of you and what you offer. Speaking of social media, I think most people look at social media as a tool for engagement or conversations, which is obviously a great platform for that, but it is also a tool for people to lurk. Are you a lurker? Are you one of those? (laughs) If you are, you might be my best friend because sometimes social media is just a fun, guilty pleasure. But the truth of the matter is we all know that there are people on social media who lurk and then they go down rabbit holes. How can you leverage the social media platforms you're on to support the rabbit hole snowballing that happens and have people, I don't know, fall upon you, your book and your message? Every platform has what we call kind of a foundation and infrastructure or a profile that typically includes places to put photos and some content. Make sure that you are optimizing that. Make sure you're taking full advantage of what your profiles allow and ensure your information about your book, your website, your offerings, everything in between is articulated. And it's a beautiful other way to passively promote who you are, what you do, The fact that you have a book, the fact that you have a message to share and what you want to do with that, take advantage of it. So do you have a computer? Is that your mode of communicating via email and on social? Well, if so, there's some things you could use on your computer too. Physically, on the outside of your computer, many people like to put stickers and you could put a beautiful sticker on your computer that has your book on it. Be a conversation starter when you're at the coffee shop and you have to take a quick bio break. Someone might be looking and might go searching for it because of that. Another opportunity is actually on your backdrop on your computer. I like this because inevitably when I am sharing my screen with somebody, that pops up. And if it's branded to align with your book and your message, it's also a conversation starter. So I think your computer in and of itself is a walking marketing tool. But also your means of transportation could be a tool for promotion as well. I have a friend who actually did a wrap on her entire car with her brand. Not saying you have to do that by any stretch of the imagination. And a bumper sticker might or may or may not be a good fit for you. Specifically though, I want you to realize your mode of transportation could actually be a moving warehouse for you. Meaning, do you have books in your trunk? like prepared and ready for you to share. If someone's interested in purchasing, there's nothing worse than not being able to take full advantage of someone who is interested in buying your book and you don't have a book to give them. So make sure that you have books available so that you can sell them to the people you meet in your Starbucks line or in the carpool at picking up your kids at school or anywhere in between because people will want to purchase from you. And how cool is it if you have also a pen ready to sign? If you're carrying a bag or a purse or backpack, something of that sort, do you have business cards in there? Do you have a book copy? Those are tools also to help you market your book. And there's nothing worse than not having a business card when you know somebody is actually interested in collaborating with you and your message. So take advantage of that and make sure you have one. And I hate to ask this, but I'm going to say this because so many of us don't take advantage of our own voice as a marketing tool. But are you out there openly talking about what you do when someone asks? Is it uncomfortable for you? If it is, you may be grappling with limiting beliefs or um, concerns and of imposter syndrome. That is normal. And I want you to look in the mirror every morning and have a conversation with yourself because you have a message the world needs to hear. And Stephanie is giving you permission to do that. Leverage your voice. When I tell people I'm an author, it always opens doors and opens conversations. Are you taking advantage of that? You have so much right in front of you, like literally at your fingertips right now. Are you leveraging it? Your next point 
Once you're aware of what you have, the next thing to consider is what do your readers need? Now, if you've been around for a while, or a hot minute, you probably know this, that I'm extremely passionate about knowing your reader's needs and how you can be a solution for them. Do you know their needs? You know, have you asked them? If not, might be a good opportunity to do some research, but I also want you to know how you and your message are solutions to those specific needs. Well, here are a few things that all readers need that you can take advantage of. One, they need to know that your book exists. Yes, seriously. How can they buy your book if they don't know that it's out there? So how are they looking for books? Where do they go? And are you there? You know, occasionally an idea would be to adjust your Amazon categories. That is a new way to make sure that new people learn about your books. You could leverage content strategies and visibility efforts to support inbound marketing and outbound marketing to reaching new audience platforms. Go where your readers are looking for books because they need to know that your book exists to be able to buy it. Another thing readers need is a financial investment and a time investment to dig in. I always say there's two forms of investment we're asking for readers. One is to financially buy the book. So is your book at a price point that readers will invest in? And if not, if what if they can't make that financial investment? Are there other ways they can get your book? Are you a part of libraries? Or do you have a YouTube channel or podcast? Like what are other ways you can share your message that could be a door opener for you? The other investment we ask readers unintentionally without verbally asking is a time investment. We're asking them to actually read the book. Do they have the time to do so? When do they have the time to do so? And if they don't have the time to do so, how can they still get all the details? There's probably some solutions there that help you meet what your readers need. And finally, they need the ability to buy it. Like they literally physically need to be able to do that. So are you equipped to sell your book from anywhere? Putting some books in that mobile warehouse you have in the trunk of your car, do you have a way for someone to pay you for it? I always love utilizing a tool like Square for easy credit card transactions. And that is always something you want to have at your fingertips. And are you bringing your book to groups and speaking engagements and places you are already at so people can buy it? You would be surprised of how many people overlook that. You have options at your fingertips to market your book and your readers are waiting, but what works really? Well, here's three things that always, always, always work when it comes to marketing. First thing is authenticity. I want you to be you and nobody else because only you can be you. Nobody else can be you. I also want you to remember why you wrote a book in the first place. Your why should be a trigger for you on all the things that you put your energy, you pour your energy into. Always go back to your why because that will keep you authentic to you and to your readers. And whatever marketing tactics you decide to use, Make sure they feel authentically you. Believe me, there are so many options out there. There's not one way from point A to point B. Have children and you'll learn quickly that there are many ways. (laughs) The second thing that always, always works when it comes to marketing is accessibility. I want you to make it easy to be accessible for people to say yes to buying your book. Make it easy. How can you make it easy for them to make that purchase? Don't overthink it and don't stand in your own way. Sometimes we get uncomfortable being the one that wrote the book. It is nerve wracking. Other people think we are way cooler than sometimes we think we are ourselves, but you are. Don't stand in your own way and have the tools at your fingertips to sell books and to sell your programs. The final thing that always, always works when it comes to marketing is giving value. I always tell authors to not give in, give way, or give up, but to give value always. Because when you give, you receive. It's as simple as that. Don't hold back value. Give it. When you give value, people will invest in you. They will buy your book. They will sign up for your programs. They will tell others about you, which is, I don't know, the best form of marketing. (laughs) Give value. When you're authentic, when you're easy and accessible to reach, and when you give value, something crazy happens. Books sell. Your message explodes in beautiful ways. Your reach extends. Your business grows you're making your author impact. And at the core of the reason that we ever do book marketing, it's the fact that you wrote a book for a reason and you want to leave a legacy. You want to make a difference. 
You want to share a message. You want to provide value. And to do so, you get the opportunity to make your author impact. Sometimes the best marketing tools to do that, you already have access to. Marketing doesn't have to be daunting. It can be empowering. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. It can be fun. Yes, really. It can be exciting. It can motivate you as you are motivating others. It can be simple and it should be. Some of the most effective marketing tactics are right here under your nose and the ones you can take advantage of now, today, like right after you listen and review this podcast. I'd love for you to message me on LinkedIn. One thing you're doing today to market your book and I would so much enjoy compiling those one things to share with others because I know we could all benefit from them. When you get down to it, that phrase, don't fix what isn't broken, really applies to marketing as well. Some things work now that also worked back then, like handwritten notes make you memorable, and business cards are gentle nudges for people to take action. Email continues to be the most effective form of communication, and connection, honestly, is what we all seek, but value is what differentiates us. To stick out may be as simple as being authentic, accessible, and value-focused. Hmm, those may actually become the core values here at the Empower PR Group, and I believe that they could be yours as well. All right, Empowered Author, you know the drill. I'm a believer that empowered people empower people. I've empowered you to make your author impact. Now, it's your turn to empower others.